As a product owner, I find knowing the user story size or the effort needed to convert the particular PBI item into an increment helps me perform better. Here's why. It is during the Blacklock refinement session that we try to take a go at the estimate. And right away, I know if my user story is too big and if there is a need to break it down into multiple user stories or I need to change the structure and make this particular item an epic that houses multiple user stories. There is a higher chance of a story with us to estimate of story points, say three or one day of effort will be delivered within that estimate. Whenever my team is working on an item that has a high story points or a more number of days of effort tacked to it, I try to keep an eye on it because more often than not, there will be things and complexities discovered mid-sprint and we'll have to tackle them head on as we go to ensure that we are able to meet the sprint goal. Third, it helps us ensure transparency. So during sprint planning, Based on the capacity of the developers, we put pull in items into the sprint backlog. In mid sprint, if we have new information that is disclosed and some uh, priorities change, then knowing the story point will help us make trade offs uh, in an informed manner. So if we need to swap, it is possible to bring in another item with the same story points and swap it with the one that was initially selected in the sprint backlog. Uh, this will be, a, however, an unplanned item, but sometimes we have made to make such choices. There are a couple of strategic advantages that uh, knowing the estimates gives the product owner. Uh, one would be release planning. There are many organizations who have a planned release cycle uh, throughout the year. So whenever we are planning the release, there is only a definite number of items or PBIs that can be tagged to a release or delivered based on the capacity that the team has. Without the estimation, there wouldn't be a viable way to know how much can actually be delivered for a release and hence, this becomes critical when we are trying to do a release planning. The other advantage, which is very important, is this definitely helps us carve out a minimum viable product. If we know that there is a phase rollout and we are aiming or planning items that can be delivered in the first phase rollout versus the second, Knowing the estimates will help the product owner to take informed decisions along with the stakeholders on which are the features that can be delivered in phase one and which are the features that will have to wait for phase two. Scrum doesn't require us to estimate in a certain way. We are free to use story points, t-shirt sizing, days, sprints. We're free to use anything that works for our team to do the estimation. Who does estimation? So in a scrum team, it would be the owners would lie on the development team. When I say development team, I mean the developers and the QA or the testers. So they are the ones who provide an estimate. So product owners can ask leading questions, take decisions on breaking stories down. Scrum masters can facilitate sessions, but providing the estimate is a responsibility that lies with the development team. Thanks for watching. If you like our conversations, then please like and subscribe to our channel.